He wanted to reshape me into his fantasy, disregarding my boundaries and shaming my body in the process. Now that I've broken free, I'm healing and rediscovering my glow without his shadow over me. Me and my new boyfriend are both autistic and have started seeing each other about four months ago. Both of us have never been in a relationship before. He has started to give me the creeps lately. He found a picture of me on social media from when I used to be goth and has been pressuring me constantly to dye my hair blue again like in the picture. He screenshot all my pictures and showed me he did that, yet won't follow me on any social media yet stalks, keeps tabs on me. He also wants me to get tattoos and dress like that again. He got me to bring all my old goth clothes to his apartment and they're in different places every time I come over, which tells me he's obviously doing something with them. He snoops through my stuff in general. He shows me offensive, over-sexualized pictures of tattooed alternative women e-girls and OnlyFans creators with tattoos in public asking me what I think of their look and if I'd change myself to look like them. He has some kinks and religious trauma which I'm non-judgmental towards but he is always trying to do bedsam and butt stuff with me and thinks I'd be into that because I used to be goth. He gets me to show him my old goth pictures and has tried to trick me into syncing my Google photos onto his computer so he can access my pictures. I would never give him any pictures because I already caught him taking pictures of me without my consent and sending them to multiple people, his family and friends. He also tries to track my location and internet usage and get money from me, but never directly talks to me about anything yet he is always trying to trick me. He used to love to bomb me but now treats me like garbage. He's narcissistic, entitled, and overall disrespectful. I've told him that I don't want tattoos and won't dye my hair and that goth is a music subculture, not a kink, and he never listens. He shakes my body, my finances, my clothes, where I live the list goes on. He doesn't listen to me in general and I feel like an object. He never wants to do any fun activities with me and I'm always compromising for him. He's very straight-laced and wants to go to places like goth clubs and nude beaches just to stare at women. Lately, he has been trying to control and shame me for what I eat and also body shame me for being fat and hairy. I am 5, 120 pounds. I am on the skinny side. He wants me to body but also not eat anything. It doesn't make sense. He points out other women exercising and takes a little dig at me. He wants me to spend thousands of dollars on my appearance, yet he has terrible hygiene and won't even comb his hair and brush his teeth for me. He likes parading me around like a show pony while he looks practically homeless. It's humiliating. He is classist and calls me poor for being upper middle class and inflates how wealthy he and his family are, yet never pays. His brother shamed me when I met him, made me feel awful. We have problems in our sex life as well. He has a hard time ejaculating and checks out other women all the time. He acts 12. He is 27. I feel controlled, devalued, criticized, unheard, and taken for granted. He is full of shame and I can't get him to have an adult conversation about any of these issues. I tried to end it twice and he started sobbing and telling me how much he needs me, loves me, cares about me, thinks I'm brilliant, etc., practically begging me to stay. I feel used and manipulated. He's an awful, reprehensible person. Update. I wanted to thank everyone who read my story and commented. Thank you for all of your kind and supportive words. I went ahead and left him. When I walked into his apartment yesterday, I had every intention of keeping my cool, of expressing myself in the calmest, most respectful way possible. It was difficult, though. My heart was pounding, but I knew what needed to be done. I started the conversation by laying it all out how I felt disrespected, how he had repeatedly crossed my boundaries, how he seemed more interested in changing who I was than loving me for who I am. I told him he picked on me, that his words and actions were cruel. I didn't hold back on the major points. He needed to know how much he had hurt him, E dot, I couldn't bring myself to dive into the deeper issues, the control, the tracking, the way he tried to exploit me. That stuff would have taken us into darker territory, and honestly, I was concerned about my safety. I didn't want to escalate the situation beyond what I could handle. This conversation already felt like walking on a tightrope, and I wasn't about to tip it over with more accusations. For two and a half hours, we went back and forth. By the end of it, I could feel myself shutting down, my energy draining away. I knew it was time to leave. A, so I was talking. I noticed something unsettling.
He has a camera in his room, and I could have sworn I saw it flicker on like he was filming the whole interaction. I can only imagine him saving this footage as some kind of proof, or maybe even a twisted souvenir of our breakup. But honestly, there wasn't much to see just me standing my ground, calmly telling him I wouldn't tolerate the disrespect any longer. I explained that his actions made me feel like he was trying to mold me into someone I wasn't, and that he clearly didn't desire me for who I was. He, of course, denied everything. Tears streamed down his face as he tried to play the victim, attempting to guilt me into staying, but I held firm. Even in that moment, he was trying to manipulate me using every trick in the book to make me feel sorry for him, to make me reconsider. He didn't get angry, and I'll give him credit for that, but his demeanor didn't put me at ease. If anything, his tears just made me more certain of my decision. It was like watching a performance, one meant to trap me in guilt and doubt that despite his tears and his apologies, I still felt this nagging fear at the back of my mind. What if he tries to retaliate? What if he decides to dox me or mess with me online? I know it's a long shot, especially since he works for the government and is still under his father's thumb. His dad controls every aspect of his life, even paying his rent. Plus, his family already has a stained reputation. They've got a history of sociopathic behavior that's made it into the mainstream news. I can't imagine him risking his career and future education prospects just to get back at me. But the fear is there. Nonetheless, not watching him, I couldn't help but see it all so clearly. The way he struggled to communicate, the way he just didn't seem to grasp the impact of his actions. It was like he couldn't even process half of what I was saying. I know he has ADHD and I've read about the double empathy problem, but it felt deeper than that. There were strong narcissistic traits and it was like he just couldn't see past his own nose. No matter how hard I tried to explain how his body shaming made me feel, he just didn't get it. Until I put it bluntly that body shaming someone will make them self-conscious and uncomfortable, that it kills any desire to be intimate with them. That's when his eyes widened, and I could see the realization start to hit him. It was almost amusing to watch. He kept apologizing, kept saying he wanted to work on things to fix our relationship. He spewed out a series of future fakes and false promises, trying to sell me on a vision of a better us. But it was too late for that. I refused, told him I'd crossed a line within myself, and there was no going back especially after the way he made me feel about my own body. That's when it finally seemed to seem teen if only a little dot leaving his apartment. I felt a strange mix of emotions. Relief for having said my piece and taken a stand. Sadness for the person I once thought he was and the relationship I had hoped we could have. And fear for the potential backlash that could still come. But more than anything, I felt strong, knowing that I had stood up for myself and refused to settle for anything less than the respect and love I deserved out I suspect he had a porn addiction, that he consumed it a lot of goth porn alternative girl porn and got the wrong idea about me because I fall into some porn stereotypes targeting nerdy men. Think Belle Delphine type stuff. I like Japanese culture and used to be very goth. Maybe he thought I was one of those porn content creators who had a target audience of lonely nerdy men. He was also obsessed with the idea of me playing video games and was always trying to get me to start playing them. I know some people confuse fantasy with reality and were suspicious of that happening within our relationship. Towards the end of our time together, he was focusing solely on my image as well as his end. We no longer discussed anything intellectual as we did when we first began seeing each other. Our relationship had dissipated into something vapid and meaningless. This was not what I had signed up for. Upon further reflection, I think he really did confuse fantasy for reality and got the wrong idea about me completely because he never listened to me when I tried to tell him what goth is about and that people have gotten the wrong in the past by assuming I was a nympho into kink due to my external appearance. Absolutely no shame in being into kink, it just is not for me right now. We were both virgins and I was not ready to go there yet. He always blocked out things he didn't want to hear or didn't align with the fantasy. It was startling how little he knew about me. He told me that doesn't sound like you when I stood up for myself. He asked me, did you hear that somewhere? And when I told him we were having too many issues very early in the relationship and it just wasn't going to work, it's as if he didn't think I was capable of thinking for myself and had actual thoughts. Or I wasn't going to script, which is a narcissist tendency. Yet sometimes he is respected by opinion. 
especially regarding topics of psychology and sociology. TBH, I thought he was some fantasy person who wanted me to solve all of his problems and fix his life. I became disenchanted when I was unable to instantly do that. He didn't know really anything about me and didn't take the time to learn about me and had some kind of fantasy version of me that existed in his head. He was more in love with the idea of having a girlfriend than me as a person. He thought the person in his head was the real me and that he was trying to help me. I do hope he seeks therapy. I wonder if he had a delusional disorder. He also had this idea that because we were both autistic that we must think exactly the same. It doesn't work that way. We all are different colors of the spectrum and my experience differs vastly from his due to subjective experience of life, factors like gender and upbringing, etc. And set at. I feel so stupid for allowing this to go on for as long as it did. I am proud of myself for resisting the pressure he put on me to move in with him give him money, and change my appearance, do uncomfortable sex acts, etc. It was a fairly easy exit in civil, but I still feel depressed. Mourning what could have been, perhaps. This is my first breakup, and his. So I am feeling all kinds of new and uncomfortable emotions and bodily sensations. I have alexithymia, so this is all very depressing and strange. I am happy with my decision and will not be looking back. I am fairly comfortable with being alone and will not be seeking a new relationship anytime soon and will perhaps enter therapy to build my self-esteem. Writing out my situation and receiving feedback has been such an eye-opener. It's like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders, allowing me to see things more clearly, and I truly can't thank all the lovely, supportive people who commented enough. Your kindness and time mean the world to me. It's helped me navigate through this complicated mess. But now I'm left with this lingering question. Should I delete the shared photo album my ex and I have together? You see, this album isn't just any collection of pictures, it's a snapshot of what I once thought was the beginning of something beautiful. We created it during our first trip together, a time filled with so much innocence and hope. It was our first relationship, the first time either of us had experienced that kind of intimacy. We lost our virginities to each other on that trip, and at the time, it felt like this magical, unforgettable memory. I fell for him so deeply during those days, thinking I had found someone truly special dot, but then everything changed. He revealed a side of himself that was dark and terrifying. What was once a beautiful memory turned into a nightmare as he morphed into this monster who shattered my heart into a million pieces. It's like the love and tenderness of that trip were just an illusion and behind it all was a person capable of such cruelty and manipulation. He's a dangerous individual, embodying those dark triad traits narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy. I know logically that keeping any connection to him is a bad idea, that it would be foolish to leave any door open, even a small one like this photo album that yet. Despite knowing all this, I can't seem to let go of the album. Part of me clings to the positive moments we shared as brief and fleeting as they might have been. I guess it's the sentimental, romantic side of me that's holding on to those memories, those bits of happiness that felt so real in the moment. They were lessons in love, in passion, in who I am and what I want, or rather, what I deserve. I've been questioning whether I should delete the album for weeks now. It's been six weeks since I broke up with him, and I've gone to great lengths to block and delete him from every aspect of my life. I've even managed to block his spy accounts, those creepy fake profiles he used to keep tabs on me. But there's still this one last connection on Google. Deleting the album and blocking him there would be the final step, the last thing needed to completely erase his presence from my existence. So why is it so hard to do? I've been wrestling with this decision, feeling torn between erasing him entirely and holding onto a piece of my past that despite everything, still holds some semblance of good memories. I know that clinging to these positive aspects might just be my mind trying to find some sense of closure, some way to make sense of how something that started so beautifully could turn so turk. But at the end of the day, keeping those memories around might just be another way of holding myself back, of keeping one foot in a past that's better left behind. It's been almost three months now since I've had any contact with him, and in that time, I've noticed so many changes in myself, especially in my body and appearance. I don't know if it was the constant stress or the way he put me down all the time, but my self-image took a serious hit when I was with him. Now, it's like I'm a completely different person, 
both inside and out. My skin, which used to be plagued with acne and dermatitis, has completely cleared up. It's like my body was physically reacting to the toxicity of our relationship, and now that I'm free, it's healing itself. My hair looks thicker and has this beautiful sheen that I don't remember it having before. My face, which used to look so gaunt and tired, now has this vibrancy to it. It's like I've been brought back to life. Even my teeth are whiter, probably because I'm not guzzling coffee like I used to. I could barely sleep when I was with him, constantly on edge, so I'd over-caffeinate just to make it through the day. Now, I'm getting proper rest, and it shows. I'm the same weight as before, but my fitness has improved, and I just feel stronger, more in tune with my body dot looking at myself now. It's hard to believe how much I've changed in just a few months. It's like I'm reclaiming my life piece by piece, shedding all the negativity that he brought into my world. And maybe, just maybe, deleting that photo album is the next step in that process. Maybe it's time to let go of even the good memories, to acknowledge that they were part of a chapter that's now closed. I deserve to move forward without any shadows of him lingering in the background. S. Oh, as hard as it might be, I think it's time to press delete to finally cut that last thread connecting me to a person who doesn't deserve to be part of my story anymore, to let go of the nostalgia and sentimentality and embrace the new, vibrant person I'm becoming. M. Why chronic muscle pain and headaches went away. These people are parasites that suck the life out of their hosts. No longer a shriveled up shell of myself. There's nowhere to go but up once you leave them and go and see.